Hi, this is Ram from Crossmind Studio and welcome to the second chapter of the animated content creation series. Today we are going to talk about a bit of process that goes into putting together your initial thoughts and ideas when you are brainstorming about it. So when brainstorming about an idea, there are a lot of thoughts that will just flow in your mind, non-stop, overlapping and parallel thoughts will start coming to you and fade away in a moment of time if they don't register well. The first thing you would want to do when you are in flood of these ideas is to record in the best way possible. You can begin by putting together few captions with few scribbles of your ideas while your thoughts are still fresh. Once you have recorded it, try to detail it out a bit. Put some constraints around them and see if it solves a purpose that you have in mind. If it's a piece of communication like an ad film or campaign, then think about if it delivers the message in the most effective way. If it's a brand ident, then think about if it's in line with the brand's guidelines such as shapes, colors, ideology, etc. If it's an animated short story, then think about your target audience for who you are making this animation for. These thoughts will help you make better decisions at each level. So at an early stage, best practice is to not settle out anything but just put down your thoughts into visuals. Keep drawing and iterate as much as possible. At this moment, your goal should be to explore ideas and not to worry about the quality of the visual. This practice will help you put together consolidated thoughts in front of you and create a foundation on which you can develop further. Pick the things that you like and complement each other from these scribbles. Ideas that sync well with your initial thought, combine them and make more variation out of them. Once you have identified the main elements of the visual, try and play around with different settings like different compositions, different arrangements of the objects, different shapes for your props, camera view, etc. These sketches could be about the entire visual or a certain detail about one particular thing. Once you have explored enough and outlined your main idea, it's best to start doing some research about the things we have thought of and put together a mood board. Not everything will pop into your thoughts, so having a visual reference for each of these subjects will help detail more when you finalize at later stage. So over here I have collected a few references for each object's details. These references and mood boards when put together certainly build a very clear picture in my mind compared to the hazy lines we drew earlier. Put together a mood board based on references for each of element you have in your idea. Some could be direct references such as the design of the prop from specific era the detail of the material, shapes, color palettes, etc. It could also be an indirect references such as just a mood of an image or colors and abstract that depicts something from your thoughts. Try and put together concentrated references for each of the elements from the scene and study them. These will help you detail out your thoughts when you sketch it out. Over here you can see I have collected visual references of multiple types. Some inspire the overall scene. Some are focused towards the design of the main object, which is the magic portion. Other than design references, I have also marked few visuals of secondary elements such as wax, dirt, smoke, the detail of the glass surface, graphic labels, feathers, fonts, lighting, behavior of the smoke, skull, etc. The original idea I had in mind was much more detailed and it's actually part of one of the projects I have worked in the past. But I had to simplify it a bit to make it suitable for the tutorial purpose. So the results you have seen are toned down a bit because it would have been a really long series to deal with if discussed at a full scale to begin with. Now when you are working in large scale production, you will be provided with concept art for each of object or the asset from the scene. A much more detailed work goes into concept arts 
as these details should be very clear for the 3D artist who is going to model from these references. But in this case, I am going to develop just one sketch as we are developing with rather simple scene and uh, very generic shapes and objects. But to compensate for that, I will make sure I have good enough visual references which I can use for 3D modeling. So now that you have good enough inputs for your thoughts, let's start building up the final sketch. And to begin with the final sketch, a good starting point is to work with the composition before getting into the details. Think about the scene and how you want to frame it, a composition which complements your shot and uh, how you want to introduce the scene to your audience. This process will be back and forth and it's not all the time that you get the perfect picture in the first attempt. So don't hesitate to explore. Once things start falling in place, do a detailed sketch when you are sure of the composition and all the elements. If you are working with a short sequence that has multiple shots, in that case a storyboard would be very helpful to figure out the sequence and transition between shots and the overall progression. Work on it until it clearly communicates your idea. This doesn't have to be a fully detailed concept art and you can use different techniques to visualize your idea such as using photograph overlays on top of your sketch to create quick base layer or just a simple sketch with simple wash of the color palettes. Trace a few objects in the sketch and put them together if you are not able to sketch well at this point. The purpose here is to able to communicate your idea to yourself and to your team in the best way possible. Once you have your sketch, you can take it further and render it with some colors. Now this picture can be used to make a lot of important decisions such as art style, staging, lighting, composition, camera angles, color palettes, how well all the designs work together, all that you can decide at this stage. So over here I'm taking help from my colleague Chirag is a concept artist and we have worked on a lot of projects together. He's a great artist and you can check out his Instagram page and follow him if you like his work. So, so play around with different light setups here. Try high key light, low key light etc. For this purpose we definitely don't need a bright light filling up the scene as we need some dark areas and mystery in the overall composition. So we try to keep it low key as possible. It definitely does complement our scene over here. The beauty of this stage is you can lay out every detail you have in your mind. It's not just about the objects. You can also paint the atmosphere, the effects, smoke, everything basically. You can visualize how the lights, effects, smoke and all those secondary elements work together with just this initial sketch. There is just no limit to how far you should go into this. The more details you can put together here, it's going to help you out at the later stage. There will come a moment when you will be able to see enough information correctly depicting your idea and you will have a complete picture. Just enough to communicate your thoughts. But keep in mind we are not done yet. This is just the beginning. And as we progress at later stages, all those processes will add into making overall visual and animation better and better. So here is the full sketch and uh, I really like the clarity of the layout here. If I zoom in here and try to frame the shot at each stage, it looks well balanced without over complicating the shot. It's readable and uh, I really like the framing for what I have in mind. There is nice pile of skull at the bottom which can lead us to the main establishing shot. There is good enough negative area behind the bottles which can be covered with smoke to hide the limits of the layout. So overall it's working well but there are still more things we need to figure out and that we can do at next stage when we pre-visualize this with the help of animatic. Even though we have a clear picture at this stage, it's not enough for us to dive into 3D because what we are dealing with is not just a still image but it also has a motion. So to see our idea working well with all the visual elements and the motion, we need to pre-visualize this and we will use animatic for that. It's going to be a lot of fun and we will be doing that using Grease Pencil in the Blender. So hope you guys are enjoying this series and more importantly learning and implementing at the same time. 
do share your ideas and what plans do you have for your first animated scene if you are new to this channel check out our other series and subscribe for the future updates hope to see you guys in the next chapter good luck